chant to hear a fragment of the Mexican national anthem. And warm welcome to our Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel de Allende. Buenos días y una cálida bienvenida a nuestra comunidad unitaria universalista de San Miguel de Allende. Thank you for joining us today. Gracias por acompañarnos en este día tan especial. In the spirit of inclusivity and acceptance, we welcome everyone, wherever you are, regardless of background of or belief, whichever you raise and whoever you love, to join us in this exploration. Today, as we reflect on the values of freedom, love, independence that shape Mexico history, we also celebrate the freedom of a spirit that binds us together as community. Here, you are encouraged to bring your whole self. As we embrace the diversity of experiences that shape our individual perspectives, together, we wave the tapestry of love acceptance, growth, and liberation. En el espíritu de inclusión y aceptación, damos la bienvenida a todos, donde quiera que estén, sin importar su origen o creencia, cualquiera que sea su raza y a quien amen, a unirse a nosotros en esta exploración. Hoy, al reflexionar sobre los valores de libertad, independencia y amor que dieron forma a la historia de México, también celebramos la libertad del espíritu que nos une como comunidad. Aquí se les anima a ser un ser completo, mientras abrazamos la diversidad de experiencias que dan forma a nuestras perspectivas individuales. Juntos, Tejemos una tela de amor, aceptación, crecimiento y liberación. Now, I want to invite Margo to give us an update with the Minister in Residence team. Hi folks, I'm Margot Johnson and I'm one of the co-chairs along with 
Kathleen Nolan, uh, of the Task Force for the Minister in Residence. And in, I've got great news. I'm not here to ask for money. I know that that comes as a great shock, but I'm not. Um, I am here to just help us celebrate the fact that um, to date, we currently have approximately $64,000 for our minister and residence program. Isn't that great? And we believe this is the amount that will enable us to hire a bicultural, bilingual minister for a year, and we are ready to start accepting applications. In case you don't know, the goal of the Minister in Residence program is for us to hire a UU minister that is familiar and with the Spanish language and the customs to help us broaden the fellowship's ability to communicate, attract, and improve our relationships with our Mexican hosts. Though the, through the chalice lighters, you all may be familiar with that, but we did, um, the chalice lighters are part of a, a grant program, uh, a GoFundMe, of the UU Southern Region, which we are a member of. And as they, they sponsored us, and we raised $9,000, well, $8,926.24, actually, um, through that. And that money came from individuals and from UU congregations in the Southern Region of the UUA. Southern Region, we are a member of. And so they sponsored this, and we are very grateful. We also were granted two UUA grants, one for 15000 and one a $5,000 um, grant that we will match. And we're well on our way to matching that, so we're in we're in good shape. Um, we are excited about looking forward to finding a UU minister. I want to say thank you. Thank you to those people who have donated, to those people who have voted for, and those people who are still supporting the program. And mainly, I want to thank this incredible group of our fellowship members who are part of the um, MIR task force. Thank you all. Good morning. For those who don't know, know me, I'm Tom Rossiello, the minister of this fellowship. Um, and it's really wonderful to be back with you in San Miguel. Malcolm and I just arrived uh, last night. You know. You know, there's so much going on here. I want you to know you have a fall lineup of some wonderful guest music, ministers and events. Um, mark your calendar for November 12th for the auction. And if anybody wants to help with the auction, see me or Jerry or Deanna afterwards. The auction is going to include some really world-class entertainment. Craig Rabano, who's the original Marius on Broadway, who is also a UU minister, and Malcolm's sister, Marion Halliday, who's been number three on the country folk music charts are both going to perform for you. So the interest, the price for the, for the auction, uh, you wouldn't get a ticket to one of their concerts for, for that price. Um, I also want you to know that while I was away, not only was I working with you, with committees, with the board, doing pastor work, but I was also promoting our fellowship and our foundation. Often I preached, and sometimes Malcolm joined me, uh, playing for UU and other liberal congregation services, asking them to partner with us in the work of justice. This summer we raised a substantial amount of money for both uh, the School for the Deaf and for Abba House. And, and we also have a generous gift 
to the congregation, which, you know, the congregation has to be strong for others to be strong. I expect the total to be, when it all arrives here, close to $10,000. Our work in this community is being recognized across the United States and Canada. And people are wishing to partner with us, to work with us, and some of them even to come here and be with us. So I just wanted to give you that update. It's so great to be back, and I look forward to talking with all of you, especially any of you that I haven't met yet. It's great to hear all these announcements, don't you think? It's, it's amazing. Well, whoever is uh, in Zoom, uh, we invite you to stay after the service to keep talking, sharing, the love, the conversation, and the great news between everybody. Uh, and the people who visit us um, here, Please stand so we can see who you are and personally greet you and ask you where are you from at, at after coffee hour, at coffee hours after the service, so we can invite you. Do we have a guest? Yeah, welcome. Please. Uh, we, I hope we can keep sharing great news with you guys. Después del servicio, todos los que estén en Zoom están invitados a quedarse para continuar platicando y compartiendo las buenas y grandes noticias de nuestra comunidad. También, todos los visitantes del día de hoy que ya se pararon pueden quedarse aquí para café y galletas y seguir compartiendo las bienaventuranzas y todas las buenas noticias de nuestra comunidad. Thank you. Muchas gracias. If we have visitors on Zoom, please type your name and where are you from in the chat box so we can greet you later. We don't forget about you. Si tenemos visitantes en Zoom, por favor agreguen su nombre y de dónde son en el chat para poder darles una bienvenida acorde. Please check our website, uufsma.org to see previous services and information on events and becoming a member. No olviden visitar nuestro servicio uufsma.org para servicios anteriores e información sobre eventos y cómo convertirse en miembro de nuestra congregación. As we gather today, we honor the spirit of independence that burns brightly in the heart of Mexico history. The fight for freedom is not just a story of the past, but a living testament of the courage, unity, and determination that continues to inspire us today. Just as Mexico's path to independence was lit by the unwavering hope for a brighter future, we now light our chalice. This flame symbolizes the light of freedom and truth, guiding us in our search for justice, dignity, and compassion. May the flame remind us of the strength found in community and the responsibility that we share to keep the flame of liberation alive within ourselves and the world around us. And now, as we begin our service with gratitude and reverence, let us join our voices together in song in English and Spanish. Y ahora, mientras comenzamos nuestro servicio con gratitud y reverencia, unamos nuestras voces en canción inglés y español. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and remain standing afterwards for our covenant. Words are in our order of service and will appear on the screen. Los invito a ponerse de pie en cuerpo o espíritu 
para permanecer de pie para nuestro covenant, para nuestro convenio y las palabras aparecerán en la pantalla. And now I invite you all to join together in reciting this fellowship's unique covenant. This is our promise that we aspire to, how to be in relation to each other and the larger world, first in Spanish and then in English. Respetamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico. Alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que beneficien nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. We respect the independent web of life and work for a just and peaceful world. We encourage the search for truth and meaning, strive for compassion in our relationships. We seek values in our lives and the lives of others. This is our covenant. We enter into a truly sacred time in our service now, a time when members and friends share joys, concerns, sorrows, and uh, uh, we acknowledge those. When we share each one, we light a candle, noting in our hearts is that prayer, that person, that thought. 
You know, in the Talmud, it's written that when you share a joy, the pleasure is doubled. And when you share pain, a sorrow, the pain is cut in half. If you have a joy, sorrow, or concern that you'd like shared in an upcoming service, please email it to me. If you're with us on Zoom this morning, uh, please go ahead right now and type it into the, type it into the chat. And uh, I don't think we have any cards this morning, do we? Okay. Well, the first joy is a personal one, and I've already shared it. It's just wonderful to be, to be back with all of you. The second joy is something you've already witnessed part of. Isn't it a joy to be at a service where many of our young Mexican members have created and are leading for us on their national holiday. <laughs> of course, we have concerns too. And the first concern is that I understand that there are several members of our community uh, that have COVID. And we wanna, we wanna wish them a quick recovery. And we also wanna um, hope that we'll all take precautions and be careful and hopefully this will this round will end very quickly and we'll we'll all be able to uh, um, you know be beyond it once again i also want to light a candle this morning for wyman russo you know his wife maya passed away uh, just a few weeks ago i want to thank all those people who have been being supportive of wyman uh, there will be a service um, which I'm working with Wyman tomorrow on coming up and we'll get you more details on that. But I wish you'd just all still hold him in his heart as he travels this, this, difficult, this difficult time. Diego? Okay. They just disappeared. <laughs> I scrolled and I got that. <laughs> Sorry, the last. Diego, do you have them? We seem to. We, 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 I scrolled and it went completely off the screen. And is excited about the Young Explorer, the Young Explorer Club. The Young Explorers Club starts next Sunday. Yay! Just shout them out, Diego. We'll do the best we can. I, I'm so untechnical. I probably blew something up. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, we also light a candle once again for all those who have lost their lives, lost their homes. Um, continue to suffer displacement because of the war in the Ukraine. And we light our other large candle for the war in the Middle East, in Gaza. We pray for the release of all the hostages. We pray for a ceasefire and a path to an end to all fighting and an eventual path to peace. We light a final candle for all those joys, sorrows, and concerns that we hold deep in our hearts but remain unspoken this morning. And we collectively resolve to do the best we can to address our own challenges and to help assist and support others who are experiencing difficult times. As we enter a time of quiet reflection, let us turn our thoughts to the essence of freedom. Freedom 
in all his forms, personal, spiritual, and collective. It's a journey we each walk, shaped by our, our choices, our experiences, and our shared history. In this stillness, let us contemplate the ways we seek freedom in our own lives and how we can nurture it in the lives of others. Breathe deeply and allow this moment to center you in gratitude for the freedoms that we hold and the paths we continue to forge together. Now, you may come forward silently to light a candle of joy or concern. Hi everyone, it's such an honor to be here with all of you today. Ah, the independence. It is not to be confused with a revolution that took place between 1910 and 1920, and especially not to be confused with Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> That was a battle in Puebla against the French. It's nothing to do. We don't even really celebrate Cinco de Mayo. We get official holidays on those dates, of course, but what, really, what we really celebrate, it's our independence. Miguel Hidalgo 
Ignacio Allende, Aldama, Morelos, Vicente Guerrero, José Ortiz de Domínguez, y Leonora Vicario, are some of the great heroes of our independence. Alongside them, Francisco Gonzalez Bocanegra was a poet who gave us the words to our national anthem. They remind us of the deep emotional connection we have to our land and our identity. So just a little background in our independence. It was September 16, 1810. This marks the beginning of our fight for freedom that ended in 1821. On the morning of the 16th, Miguel Hidalgo, who was a Catholic priest, issued the famous Grito de Dolores, the cry of Dolores, in the town of Dolores Hidalgo. He was calling the people to rise upon Spanish rule. Again, sorry, Spanish rule. This moment marked the beginning of a long struggle for freedom. As the Mexican people sought to break free from the control of a Spanish crown, which has dominated Mexico for nearly 300 years. Hidalgo, along with the key figures such as Ignacio Allende, Juan Aldama, and Jose Ortiz de Dominguez, railed an army made up of mostly indigenous people. And of course, some mestizos, which was um, people of mixed race between Spanish and indigenous. The war went through various phases, with victories and defeats on both sides. Unfortunately, Hidalgo was captured and executed in 1811, but, fight, but the fight obviously continued. Leaders like Jose Maria Morelos and later Vicente Guerrero picked up on the mantle and carried on the struggle. After more than a decade of bloody conflict, the war for independence finally ended in 1821 when the plan of Iguala was signed, securing Mexico's independence from the Spain. The first independent Mexican government was then established, and Mexico became a sovereign nation after centuries of colonial rule. Each year, people here in Mexico, we just celebrate this pivotal moment in our history taking place in September 16, but of course, have you seen many days prior to this event, we have reenactments going on all the time. We just want to commemorate the courage and sacrifice for those who fought for our freedom. As someone who was born here in Mexico and raised here, I am Mexican. <laughs> and Mexican independence holds a special place here in my heart. It is a day that transcends the mere historical commemorations. It is a celebration of who we are, our roots, our struggles, and our triumphs. Every year, in the heart of Mexico, the president reenacts El Grito de Independencia, which was the cry of Dolores. It is a powerful reminder of our ancestors' courage and the birth of our nation. Before I move forward, I need to state that I am pretty much apolitical. None of the political parties here in Mexico align with my personal beliefs. However, we have the first woman in presidency. And I am a feminist, so this makes me, of course, very, very proud. This is something historical. We, unfortunately, still live in a very machista country. And this is the first time Mexico will be ruled by a woman. And like I said, just regardless of my personal political beliefs, this is something that should be celebrated. Next year, Claudia will be giving El Grito. This is historical. This is the first time a woman will lead this momentous event marking a new chapter in our history. Mexico's independence was a very strong fight for self-governance, justice, and the rights of the Mexican people. 
Today, over 200 years later, Mexico finds itself at a crossroad where that hard-won justice, that democratic rule, can once again be at risk. Not from foreign powers, but from internal political shifts. The current judicial reform proposed by the Mexican government has sparked heated debate and concern. The reform seeks to reshape the nation's judiciary, which could potentially undermine the, powers, the balance of power among Mexican branches of government. Critics argue that these changes could erode the autonomy of the judiciary concerning power in the executive's branch and threatening the system of cheeks and balances that protects our democracy from authoritarian rule. If these reforms go forward on check, Mexico's hard war independence could be compromised. Judicial independence is crucial in maintaining a free society where citizens are protected from authoritarian rule and have their rights upheld. Without an impartial and independent judiciary form, the very foundations, foundation of Mexico's democracy could be shaken, leading to potential abuses of power, less governmental accountability, and a decline in personal freedoms. In many ways, this moment echoes the spirit of Mexico's original fight for its independence. Just as a people of 1810, who fought to free themselves from the dominance of oppressive system, today's Mexicans must stay vigilant to ensure that the freedom and rights gained through the struggle are not lost. Independence is just a moment in history. It is something that we must safeguard in every generation. The fight for freedom is ongoing. And the question now is whether Mexico will be able to protect the democratic institutions that keep it truly independent or not. As Mexicans, we celebrate the independence each year. We must consider how to protect our country from the new threats and so right from within. However, for me, this is more than just a historical milestone. It is a time for reflection as well. It is a time to think about the things that holds us captive within our own lives. Just as our forefathers sought for freedom from colonial rule, I use this time to seek freedom from the behaviors and patterns that no longer serve me. The celebration of independence, it's not only about remembering our pasts. It's about also liberating ourselves from what holds us back in the present, whether it's a fear, a doubt, or just negative habits. We are capable of achieving what we set our minds and hearts to. We just have to believe in ourselves. But while we celebrate, we must also acknowledge the immense loss that accompanied this fight. The war for independence was, just like any war, a massacre. We gained our freedom, but we lost so much along the way. Our indigenous gods, many, many of our sacred traditions, and countless lives were sacrificed. As a culture, we suffer profound losses, and this scar of the losses remain. It is important to remember that war, it's never the answer. Its cost is always way too high. Our independence came with bloodshed, and while we celebrate our freedom, we must also mourn what we've lost. Mexican Independence Day, it's always seen is something very, very festive, and it is. It is also a feast to the senses. The streets always come alive with vibrant colors, music always fills the air, and the tantalizing aroma of traditional dishes like chiles en nogada, pozole, 
and tamales draws everyone together. If you've never tried these dishes, this is the perfect time to do so. Hmm, I lost myself. Here. <laughs> there is a time, there is a shared joy in these moments. There is a collective pride that unites us as Mexicans. It is a time when we come together to celebrate not just the independence, but our identity, our culture, and the hope that lies within our future. The colors in our flag represent green for the hope, white for the unity, and red for the blood of our national heroes, waved proudly during these festivities. While, not me, while I might not be a huge fan of the fireworks, because my pets are certainly not fond of the fireworks, <laughs> I am deeply moved by the unity and pride that this day brings. It is a time where we stand together, not just as Mexicans, but as human beings, striving for freedom, dignity, and peace in our own lives. So today, I invite you all to celebrate with me. Let us honor the past, reflect on our personal journeys, and embrace the joy of being something bigger than ourselves. Above all, let us strive for peace, because wars, they should all be over, and peace should be our lasting legacy. Viva Mexico. <laughs> And now, we're going to welcome Miguel Ángel to the podium. He's going to do a reenactment of El Grito. Words of response will appear on the screen. They will not be appearing on the screen. <laughs> As you just heard, you just have to yell, Viva, right after any of Miguel Ángel's statements. Sorry. Viva nuestra independencia nacional. Viva. Vivan los héroes que nos dieron patria y libertad. Viva. Viva Hidalgo. Viva. Viva Morelos. Viva. Viva Allende. Viva. Viva Doña Josefa Ortiz de Domínguez. Viva. Viva México. Viva. Viva México. Viva. Viva México. I wanted his dead voice to do this. <laughs> and now, let us take a moment to reflect on Canto de Chinaca. This is a powerful song rooted in the spirits of Mexico's fight for independence. This song captures the bravery, resilience, and unwavering, unwavering sorry, hope of those who fought for freedom, reminding us of the sacrifices made and the enduring quest for justice that resonates even today. Yo cuando me hacen la guerra, quien lo llamo a nuestra tierra, quien le ruega estar aquí, yo quererte con mirarte, sabe Dios que me condenas, vea que te saquen de penas, vamos en hoy salir. Mi 
mariquita y trabajemos unidos. ¿Quién le dio tan grande pico si soy chinaquita yo? Y antes de que un extranjero darle mi mano resuelva, le diré, vea, que te envuelva la madre que te parió. ¡Majequita! ¡Qué lindo es pasar la vida junto a una blusa encarnada, viendo una frente tostada y hermosa con su altivez! ¡Majequita! El extranjero es un plato desabrido, ven chinaca, te querido, a espantar a ese francés. After this beautiful song and this beautiful time to see what kind of dishes we like to taste, I'm going to start with the offering. Así como nos reunimos en el espíritu de comunidad y valores compartidos, los invitamos a participar en este acto de generosidad que sostiene a nuestra comunidad y nos permite continuar el trabajo significativo que realizamos juntos. En la esencia de nuestros principios unitarios universalistas, comprendemos que nuestras contribuciones individuales, sean grandes o pequeñas, crean colectivamente un impacto positivo en nuestra comunidad y más allá. Así como el camino hacia la independencia de México se construyó sobre los esfuerzos colectivos de muchos. Nuestra comunidad se fortalece con las contribuciones de cada miembro. Su apoyo nos permite fomentar un espacio donde se escuchan voces diversas y donde florece la exploración de ideas, la compasión y la comprensión. Mientras las canastas de ofrendas circulan por la sala, que este sea un momento de reflexión sobre la interconexión de nuestras vidas, el legado de libertad y la responsabilidad compartida que tenemos por el bienestar de nuestra comunidad. Les agradecemos su generosidad, que nuestras contribuciones colectivas sigan nutriendo el espíritu de inclusión, amor y libertad que define nuestra comunidad unitaria universalista. As we come together in the spirit of community and shared values, we invite you to participate in the act of generosity that sustains our fellowship and enable us to continue the meaningful work we do together. In the essence of our Unitarian Universalist principles, we understand that our individual contributions, whether great or small, collectively create a positive impact in our community and beyond. Just as Mexico's path of, to independence was willed to the collective efforts of many, is, is too in our fellowship, is strengthened by the contributions of each member. Your support allows us to foster a space where diverse voices are heard, and where the exploration of ideas, compassion, and understanding flourishes. As the offering baskets make their way around the room, let this be a moment of reflection on the interconnectedness of our lives, the legacy of freedom, and the shared responsibility we hold for the well-being of our community. We thank you for your generosity. 
May our collective contributions to continue to nurture the spirit of inclusivity, love, and freedom that defines our Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. And now, please let us join our voices together in song. Hymn 121, We'll Build a Land. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you're able.
Before our closing words, I just really want to thank everyone that helped put this service together. Really appreciate you. And as we prepare to leave this space, let us carry with us the spirit of freedom that has been at the heart of today's reflection. The struggle for independence, both in history and in our personal lives, reminds us that the pursuit of freedom is ongoing and requires courage, compassion, and unity. Like those who fought for Mexico's liberation, may we strive to build a world where justice, dignity, and respect for all are not just ideals, but realities we work toward together. As we step back into our daily lives, let us continue to nurture the seeds of freedom within ourselves, in our community, and in the world so that the light of independence continues to shine brightly for us all. Thank you. Please remain seated for our postlude. Despertar la mañana, quiere cantar su alegría. 